J Drone here. It is February 12th, 2016, and it is brutal cold. I'm out here with the Striker from World Tech Toys. Go ahead and flick it on. And we're going to set it right on top of some snow and calibrate our controller, or bind it, I should say. It's binding. And we're going to go for a flight. The main reason today's flight is not just to fly it because I want to fly it, although that is one reason, because I do enjoy flying these things a lot, but uh, to check the battery life on this, my initial thoughts are that extreme colds affect these batteries drastically. Um, I'm not sure if that's true, but we're definitely going to find that out today. It's 15 degrees out. The precipitation is 15%, humidity is 71%, and the wind 7 mile per hour not worried about the wind I had this out over 10 mile an hour wind and I was able to fly it without crashing it so I don't foresee any issues today so we're gonna take it out far we're gonna take it up up high and really get a good test on this battery in this cold yesterday I had an indoor flight that could probably have lasted anywhere from 9 to 10 minutes but again once I see those lights start blinking on the bottom of them, let me know the battery's getting low I bring it in and I try to catch it every time. Uh, one, I'm catching it so I don't cause damage to the quadcopter, although it's very durable and I don't think it would get damaged hitting the ground. I just like catching it. Um, it there's no what ifs and it might and I caught it, it didn't hit the ground, there's no damage. And also, just theory of mine, just like the cold thing is a theory of mine, I believe... Uh, that if you completely kill a battery you're gonna kill the cells in it just like a car battery if you bring that down all the way down to the bottom and you kill every cell and then you go to recharge it it's not gonna work properly so I'm applying that in the quadcopters which there are two different things one drives and one's much bigger these are much smaller and they fly but I'm sure it's almost the same concept uh, I've had good flight times and I think it's a testament to not killing these batteries. I also don't overcharge them. When I put that on the charger, I keep an eye on the charger. When the charger says it's charged, that battery comes off immediately. And as you can see, we're doing very well here. I'm flying a distance away from me. I'm also flying up high. And there is no issues here. We are now pushing three minutes. As you can see, I was flying directly backwards in front of me, which is easier said than done to keep it that stable where it's an eye level of you flying backwards. But these these do have 360 degree controls. You can fly it left, you can fly it right, you can fly it forward, backwards. You can do pirouettes while you're flying it. It's very challenging, but you can do them. We're off in the distance here. You can see when I'm making the slight rotations, it's not jerking, it's not jumping. There, there is no hesitation. I, I want it to, to yaw to the left, it yaws to the left. I want it to yaw to the right, it yaws to the right. This is a very nice quadcopter. It does not have your features of your, let's say, $100 to $150 to almost $200 quadcopters where you have a return home button. If you, it gets way too what, far away from you, it doesn't have your headless mode. Uh, where you really don't have to watch your orientation. Does that mean this is a bad quad quadcopter and the other ones trump this one because of the price range, because of the features and the bells and the whistles? I think not. I think this one actually teaches you how to fly a quadcopter because you do not have the assists and features that you would on your more expensive ones. This one is your basic meat and potatoes. You can fly and you have to know your orientation you have to figure out how to bring that back to you and it's easier said than done and again you can see we're out there and right now is about the time that I was getting uh, in the cold and the wind I mean granted I wasn't out this cold and it was much windier so let's see how long this lasts here 
it's flying very well. Cold has no effect on the way this flies. I like the range on this. Um, I've pushed the limits to this where I've lost it twice. I lost it once for a week, it sat out in cold, and uh, actually had to have my uncle come out and find it. He has a quad and was able to cover more land than myself. And then uh, shortly thereafter, I lost it again, where I had to climb down a mountain embankment and then climb back up the mountain to retrieve it. And there, there's ways to figure out if you lose, if you lose sight of it, you can kind of go by your last visual point of it, and then you can kind of fan out an area where it should be. But try to keep it within your visual sight, and you won't lose it. You won't have the troubles of trying to go look for it or the the literal financial loss. I mean, this isn't a huge financial burden, $60 roughly, brand new, uh, depends retail, they go up and down. But uh, if you keep it in your eyesight and don't let it go too far, you'll never lose one of these. And we are pushing seven minute mark here. Uh, sorry about that. I was flying with one hand. That doesn't quite work. <laughs> My uh, hands are very cold. I was I brought four batteries out. I think this is the only flight that I'm gonna make with this. But as I was saying, and watch this, just throw it up and throttle up. You don't have to start from the ground. You can throw the quadcopter in air and then start it. It will fly fine and it will take off fine. Um, but back to the time, we're at seven minutes and 16 seconds here. So I think uh, my theory has just been crushed. The cold, at least on this quadcopter, has zero effect on the battery. We're actually pushing a higher flight time than I've generally had with these quadcopters. So I think uh, the assumption I'm going to make to the short flight times is not the cold, but the wind. That it had to fight the wind so much and we were high throttling and literally going nose into the wind while I was blowing at it. I think that takes a toll on the battery. Uh, not so much the wind. Or the cold, excuse me. The wind uh, definitely has the toll on it. But the cold, <laughs> we're over eight minutes now. And that's a good catch. Seen it blinking, brought it down. This is a striker from World Tech Toys. I'm going to show you what it sees. And it sees me. <laughs> the quality on this camera is okay. It's not high def, but you're also not going to get the jello. You have no jello. It is bouncing up and down a little bit, but that's not jello. That's actually the quad copper bouncing up and down. The video quality of this is actually stable. We're going to go ahead and fly this up. I'm going to show you some rooftops here. Very stable. And there is a little bit larger town, small town yet, of McAdoo. And you can imagine the top of the rooftop, how high that is, and I can see almost on the opposite side of the rooftops at the highest point where I went here, which I didn't take it all the way up. I didn't, I didn't push the limits with this, because again, my hands are freezing. And again, you see me, in the video I noted when I was flying backwards, this is what it saw. I was flying backwards away from myself and up slightly. And lastly, we'll show you the small town that I live in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is J Drone, and it is February the 12th.